Welcome back to our channel on the story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. This is one of the most well-known stories in the Bible, and it has been the subject of much debate over the years. While many people focus on the miraculous nature of the story, others argue that the flood was morally necessary. In this video, we will explore the reasons why the flood was necessary from a moral perspective. The story of Noah's Ark is found in the book of Genesis. It tells the story of how God instructed Noah to build an ark and save two of each animal from the great flood. The ark would act as a refuge for the animals and Noah and his family, while God cleansed the earth. After 40 days, the water began to recede and the ark came to a stop on the mountains of Ararat. Noah released a dove, which returned with an olive leaf signifying that the waters had decreased. Noah and his family then left the ark, taking the animals with them and God put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of His promise to never again send a flood to destroy the earth. While many people focus on the miraculous nature of the story, others argue that the flood was morally necessary. According to some interpretations of the Bible, the flood was necessary because the world had become corrupt and wicked. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him at His heart. In other words, the flood was a way for God to cleanse the earth of its wickedness and start anew. From a moral perspective, the flood was necessary because it was a way for God to punish the wickedness of man. It was a way for God to show that He would not tolerate evil and that He would take action to punish those who did wrong. The flood was a way for God to demonstrate His power and authority over the earth. In this video, we will explore the reasons why the flood was necessary from a moral perspective. We will examine the different interpretations of the story and the arguments for and against the flood. We will also look at the lessons that can be learned from the story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood, and how they can be applied to our lives today. According to the Bible, the world was filled with wickedness and corruption before the flood. People were committing all sorts of sins, including violence, theft, and sexual immorality. The book of Genesis describes the situation as follows, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The wickedness of humanity was so great that God decided to wipe out all living creatures from the face of the earth. The extent of the wickedness of humanity at the time is difficult to quantify, but the Bible provides some examples of the sins that were being committed. In Genesis 6 11-12, it is written that the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. This suggests that violence was rampant and that people were not living according to God's laws. In addition to violence, theft, and sexual immorality, the Bible also mentions other sins that were being committed. In Genesis 6 2, it is written that the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. This suggests that there was a lack of respect for the sanctity of marriage and that people were engaging in relationships that were not approved by God. The extent of the wickedness of humanity at the time was so great that God decided to take drastic action. He decided to wipe out all living creatures from the face of the earth, with the exception of Noah and his family. This was a difficult decision, but it was one that was necessary in order to cleanse the earth of its wickedness. From a moral perspective, the flood was justified because it was a way for God to punish the wickedness of humanity. It was a way for God to show that He would not tolerate evil and that He would take action to punish those who did wrong. The flood was a way for God to demonstrate His power and authority over the earth. The story of the flood is a powerful reminder of the consequences of sin. According to the Bible, the flood was a punishment for the sins of humanity. The concept of sin is central to the Christian faith. Sin is defined as any thought, word, or action that goes against God's will. The Bible teaches that sin entered the world through Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Since then, all human beings have been born with a sinful nature. The consequences of sin are severe. The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. This means that sin leads to spiritual death, which is separation from God. Sin also has physical and emotional consequences. It can lead to sickness, pain, and suffering. Sin can also damage relationships and cause emotional pain. The flood serves as a warning to future generations about the consequences of sin. It shows that God takes sin seriously and that He will not tolerate it. The flood was a punishment for the sins of humanity, and it serves as a reminder that sin has consequences. The story of the flood also shows that God is just and that He will punish sin. It is a warning to all people to turn away from sin and to live according to God's purpose for mankind, 
The concept of sin is central to the Christian faith. The consequences of sin are severe and can lead to spiritual, physical, and emotional death. The story of the flood serves as a warning to future generations about the consequences of sin. It shows that God takes sin seriously and that He will punish it. Like, share and subscribe for more video like this. The story of the flood raises important questions about the role of God in human affairs. Why did God decide to send the flood? What does this tell us about God's character? These are complex questions that have been debated by scholars and theologians for centuries. According to the Bible, God sent the flood as a punishment for the sins of humanity. The flood was a way for God to show that He would not tolerate evil and that He would take action to punish those who did wrong. The flood was a way for God to demonstrate His power and authority over the earth. However, the story of the flood also shows that God is just and merciful. He spared Noah and his family, and He made a covenant with them to never again destroy the earth by flood. The role of God in the story of the flood is complex and multifaceted. On the one hand, God is portrayed as a powerful and just judge who punishes sin. On the other hand, God is also portrayed as a merciful and loving God who spares Noah and his family. The story of the flood is just one example of the many ways in which God interacts with humanity throughout the Bible. The flood was a warning to humanity that God takes sin seriously and that He will punish it. The story of the flood also shows that God is just and that He will punish sin. It is a warning to all people to turn away from sin and to live according to God's will. The story of the flood also raises important questions about the nature of God. Why did God choose to send the flood? What does this tell us about God's character? These are complex questions that have been debated by scholars and theologians for centuries. Some argue that the flood was necessary because of the wickedness of humanity. Others argue that the flood was a way for God to demonstrate His power and authority over the earth. The story of the flood also relates to broader themes in the Bible. It is a reminder that God is just and that He will punish sin. It is also a reminder that God is merciful and loving. The story of the flood is just one example of the many ways in which God interacts with humanity throughout the Bible. In conclusion, the story of the flood raises important questions about the role of God in human affairs. The flood was a punishment for the sins of humanity, but it also shows that God is just and merciful. The story of the flood is just one example of the many ways in which God interacts with humanity throughout the Bible. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed the video.